Want to know how term one of medical school at St. George's University looked like? Stay tuned to find out. Hi everyone and welcome to my journey into becoming Dr. Nanette Varela. My name is Nanette and welcome to my channel. So I just finished term one of medical school. I start term two in a couple of days and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what is a term one recap. A lot of you have been wanting to uh, know a little bit more about this and have contacted me and I think this is the best way, a short little video for me to show you guys how term one is. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Go ahead, subscribe to my channel, like this video and let me know down below in the comments if this video was helpful for you. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to be doing once you arrive to the island is you're going to have your orientation week. Orientation week includes everything that has to do with the school's policy, getting to know the school, all the rules and regulations that the school provides you, and getting to know how to read your schedule, and getting familiarized with the school overall. So this is a very important week. You get to know a lot of people. You start meeting new people. You start getting to know how the school runs, and um, this is a a great way to start the first week of medical school eventually. After that, you're going to start off with your first module. This term is composed of three main modules, foundations of medicine, musculoskeletal system, and your um, CPR, which is your uh, respiratory, renal, and cardiovascular system. Within these modules, you're going to have five exams. Foundations of Medicine, which is FTM, is going to be broken down into two parts. Musculoskeletal system, it's one part, and your CPR, your cardiovascular pulmonary renal, is going to be composed of two parts as well. In the Foundations of Medicine, this is going to be basics foundations. You've seen this before. This is going to be what we did in um, the MCAT, anything that has to do with genetics and DNA replication, transcription, translation, um, the cell itself, everything basics into what is medicine. This is what's going to be basically your exam one. On exam two, it's going to be a little bit more in depth. You're going to start seeing a lot of more of receptors in the nervous system. You're going to start seeing a little bit more of pharmacology, more of the drugs. Um, but it's a very more of a basics within um, FTM that you're going to cover everything. Now, your second module is your MSK. MSK is your musculoskeletal system. This is your anatomy from the neck down. You will be doing all the muscles, their innervation, their our, um, blood supply, their, um, their function and location. This part is going to be a little bit more material in depth. You have never seen this amount of material before. It's going to be a little bit more hectic, but... Um, this has to do with all of your anatomy for the term one. Now, when you start into CPR, this is your cardiovascular, pulmonary, and renal section. Your exam one is going to be, is not your exam one, but is the first exam of CPR, is going to be about everything about the heart. The muscles, all the functions of the heart, all, all of it about hypertension, everything that has to do with the heart, you're going to be functioning and being able to go ahead and understand all of these things. Now your second exam is going to go into a little bit more in depth with the pulmonary and renal topics. Now within the pulmonary and renal topics, you're going to have a little bit more of math in this exam, a lot of um, calculating the alveolar ventilations for the lungs. You're going to know about all the cells in the lungs, their functions, everything that has to do with diseases in relation to the lungs. And then with the renal section, which are the kidneys, it's going to be everything with trying to figure out your glomerular filtration, which is all your maths that is going to come into this. Um, you're going to know the function of the kidneys, the diseases that um, affect this, embryological defects. Everything that has to do with um, the kidneys is going to be on this exam. So it will be a total of five exams. And um, it's it's it feels like a lot when you're on the first time, but um, my suggestion is that you need to take it day by day. Um, it could be very, very overwhelming. Um, so definitely take it day by day. Organize yourself. It's very important to organize yourself. 
um, so you find what is your way and your best functioning tools that work for you. What functions for you may not function for your friends. So it's very important for you to find what works best for you. After these five exams for each module, you will be having a lab exam. This lab exam will be composed of 25 questions and it's going to be um, multiple choice and you're going to be at the lab and you're going to be looking at the specimens and you need to identify either the function of what's getting um, identified, the innervation or the blood supply. So um, after that, you're going to have an OSPI exam. This is your um, physical examination and you're going to have mostly five stations within this physical examination. Throughout the term, you're going to be attending um, events called the small groups. These small groups, you're going to be having them relatively once or twice a week, depending on your schedule and the college that you belong in. And within these small groups, you're going to be getting clinical cases or you're going to be presenting um, probably histology most of the time for whatever organ or system you're reviewing in that time. So within these small groups, you're going to be receiving physical examinations at some point that you're going to be practicing throughout the term. And once you get at the end of the term, you're going to have a full OSPI exam, which is your physical examination exam that you're going to be going to assisting uh, patients and being able to provide the correct physical examinations for the vignettes that you are given. My best advice for you is to organize yourself. Organization is such an important part of medical school and I think this is what works best for me. Like I said, uh, not everything works exactly the same for everybody. Everybody is different. What works for me is that I organize myself. I have two planners and I go day by day. I take it day by day. Do not try to like advance yourself to what more you have to do because you already have a lot to do. Medical school and material overall, it is overwhelming. You have too much material coming at you at once and you need to be organized. Organized enough that you do not fall behind. You cannot fall behind. That is the number one rule that I go by that you cannot fall behind. The moment that you fall behind, you're gonna be playing the catch up game and that's not something that you want to be happening to you, okay? So organize yourself, plan yourself out. What do you have to do for that day? Don't worry about what you have to do tomorrow. You gotta worry about what you have to do for that day. Within that day, write down all the things that you have to do. And as you get them done, cross them out so you see that you yourself are succeeding in that day and that you feel confident that you're getting things done instead of not seeing things overall as a bigger picture and you might feel that you're behind. If you do this, I feel like that might be a little bit more helpful. This is what helps me. But it's a tool that you can use. Try it out. Um, as well as I, for the, my first term, for my first exam, um, I, it was the first exam. Obviously, nobody knows how much material you're getting at Trona. And um, I did well. Like, it's not a problem. But um, I started to see what started to work out for me. And I, did, I didn't I did do Anki for the first um, exam. I started to learn a little bit about it in the first exam. And definitely started using it for my second exam. And it worked for me amazing. I love it. It is such a fast, rapid memorization tool that it's gonna be very easy for some people to use if they if they like this type of learning. So I definitely recommend that. Start to learn Anki if you wanna start going into that. Or Quizlet is really good for some people that use it as well because you know the histology, you gotta be able to identify things and that can be very helpful for some people. So I do use Anki a lot. And another thing that is very important is to do practice questions. Practice question helped me so much for MSK, MSK and the anatomy. Practice questions, putting in your knowledge into practice and seeing different type of questions, different type of formats of questions that you can get asked. And this is, that that's gonna be the best thing that you can do. If you are studying and you see yourself that you're studying and you don't take time from practice questions, you won't know what you really know and what you don't know. So it's very important for you to focus on what you don't know. If you already know DNA replication, don't go on reviewing DNA replication because you already know DNA replication. Focus on DNA transcription if you don't understand DNA transcription, for example. Those are things that, you know, you got to be able to identify what you know and what you don't know. And those practice questions are going to be able to help you out in those type of things. And as well, you need to go ahead. What works for me 
is to pre-read my lectures before class um, because I take that as actual lecture as a second pass to my pre-reading. So I pre-read, I take, I highlight what I think is important while I pre-read and within that pre-reading then I'll go ahead and take my own notes. My own notes requires not writing reword wording everything what the PowerPoint says. I'm going to read the slide and within a couple of points and adding a little bit of pictures if I need it, I will go ahead and create the notes for that slide and I can um, put in a 50 to 60 page PDF lecture into a two to three, maybe four pages of notes. And it's, I know directly where my things are and you yourself will be able to identify what is important and what is not. So definitely do a lot of those things. Those are my tips on how I studied for medical school. I did a lot of the repetition. I did pre-reading before my lectures. I took my notes. After my lectures, I take it as a second pass. After the lectures, I went ahead and did Anki or do like a whiteboarding as well. I like to whiteboard if it's a lot of drugs or formulas, rewrite them, write them two, three, four, five times a day if you have to, you know, the more you rewrite it, the more you repeat it, the more it's gonna get memorized into your brain and it's something that's gonna get imprinted into your knowledge and that's what you need. You need imprinting because it's not always about memorization but understanding because um, like I said, this is going to be for your knowledge your whole entire career and after in term two you're going to have a cumulative exam of your term one and term two so this is something that you need to be able to master in knowledge and not just memorizing so um these are my tips that i think are what helped me succeed in medical school in term one of medical school and i hope that this helps you to succeed in your upcoming new term if you're starting medical school. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like it and comment down below if these tips help you out. So I hope you guys have a beautiful time and I'll see you guys on my next YouTube video.